How's it going everyone? In this video we're going to take a look at the Nendoroid of Dizzy from the series Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear Excerpt R2 in this case with the logo right there. By the way, it is fireworks day today so you're going to hear a lot of fireworks in the background and maybe some barking dogs and maybe some loud kids. Who knows? So let's carry on with this. Dizzy is from the Guilty Gear series. I think she became playable in Guilty Gear X or maybe X2. I haven't been hugely in touch with the series. I used to play X and X2. Briefly had to go at Guilty Gear first game on PS1. But since then, I really haven't been playing too much of this series. That said, the character is interesting because she has these two different types of wings, a light and a dark type wing coming out of her. She's a gear, by the way, in terms of story lore. What a gear is exactly? Well, you're going to have to Google that for the best explanation. But I treat it a bit like being a mutant in X-Men. That's how I kind of see gears in Guilty Gear universe. But anyway, it's an interesting character and I thought let me pick up an Nendoroid to see what this character looks like in an Nendoroid form. So as a packaging, it's a little bit bigger than what you might expect from a regular Nendoroid. For example, the Kingdom Hearts stuff that I've covered recently. Because of those wings in particular, they, they are attached to her and they come out. The wings are fully sculpted, so we'll get into that when we unbox this. But that's why the packaging is a little bit beefier or bulkier. This was a buy directly from Good Smile Company. I was able to import that directly in the UK, so that was pretty good. You should still be able to get it. I will leave some links in the description below for places that do have this still in stock if you're interested. So packaging-wise, otherwise, it's got the same window display, but just a bigger format, as I mentioned. On the side, you've got some photos of the picture of the figure in different poses she comes with the two wings already attached as i mentioned and a little effect kind of ring there plus the base i'm guessing the base is a little bit more wider to incorporate for the bigger figure some more photos on the back like so looking pretty good actually i like the way that it's all sculpted so far but we'll see more in just a moment same then on the other side on the top you've just got the number 1562 and again another photo and then similarly down below so here's Dizzy and the parts out of the box. Now what I've done is I actually set up Dizzy with some of the parts and the wings in particular already. So it's not really how it's going to be out of the box, but I'll explain. Now before we get into the figure, there are still fireworks going on and there are kids screaming and potentially dogs barking away. It is fireworks day today. So please excuse the noise in the background. They're not my kids. So let's start with the arms first and then we'll go into the main figure with the parts. So the actual default arms that appear on Disney and that are attached to Dizzy, Dis Disney, I say Disney, Dizzy, is actually going to be the straight arms like so. So this is actually the straight arm plus the shoulder piece by default is already attached. So I've got the ones where she's clasping her hands. So these actually come up like this. So this is the shoulder bit here. You can see which is nicely sculpted as well. The little kind of feathery or scaly bits there in black at the tip for the dress. And then you've got a little bit of gold detail there. And you can see a little bit of flesh tone on the actual shoulders because the shoulders are exposed at the dress. Then you've got the sleeve here, which has extra detail going on with more gold and some kind of tassels or kind of ribbony type of stuff with the dress. And then the blue bit exposed at the sleeve or the cover of the sleeve as well. The actual hand for the default one attached to the figure when you get it out of the box is just going to be open palm hand. Pretty standard Nendoroid hands as so. You can take them out if you want to. They are tiny as Nendoroid, hand, Nendoroid hands tend to be, so try not to lose them. The same thing is going to be with the left hand as well, so I won't go into too much detail there. It's the exact same thing. Then the alternate hands or limbs that you get for the arms. So no shoulder piece here. You're supposed to attach these two arms to the shoulder piece I just showed you. These are slightly bent arms. Same dress kind of sculpt there as well. One thing I want to point out with my particular one, it might not be the case with yours. This shading here is a little bit more cream or yellowy rather than this one, which tends to be a little bit more on the white side. I'm not sure if that's going to show up on the video so clearly, but I can see that clear as day in my in, with my own eyes. The fists attached to this one, the hands attached to this one are the fists or the closed hand. They're not really fists as such. They're just kind of loosely folded fingers as well. So they're kind of gentle looking. They're quite, ha quite handy hands to have in my opinion. You do get an extra leg piece as well. It's slightly bent right leg piece here. You can see the tights and the gold bit detail for the tights there. And you've got the shoe like so. And then the sole of the shoe is going to be healed but in blue. You take this bit. Out. Actually, no, yeah, you do take this bit out and then just peg that in and I'll show you that later on as well. I haven't actually really used this one myself. Uh, I just prefer her like that, but we can show you that later on. Now with the wings, as I mentioned, I've changed a couple of things with the wings. So the actual default hands for those two, so Undine and Necro, I think his name is Necro. So the actual default hand for that one is going to be this one here, where it's just going to be the left arm. That's kind of saying, come on, come on type of thing. And then with the right one or the left wing is going to be this one, which is similarly, but a little bit more gentle in its approach. So have a look at both of them together. So you've got a sleeve sculpted on the Necro one. 
and then there it's nice de as in it's nicely sculpted there's not much detail on it this actual paint on undine is nice because the whole kind of gradient or hues and tones of it is very very icy blue and it's really apparent throughout not just on the wing tips as you can see there but throughout as well it's really nicely done it's not like the necro one doesn't have it it's just i like ice blue as a color it's really nice but necro does have that as well you do get joints by the way spare joints so they're really attached to joints we'll go into that in a little bit more detail but you do get a spare left and right wing joint as well like so and they still have the good smile face on either of them both of them as well so it's handy to have them they may loosen up over time hopefully they don't for you guys you do get a spare neck joint as well like most nendoroids do nendoroids do come with now Dizzy only comes with one additional alternate faceplate, and it's going to be one where she's actually using that one. This is actually the default faceplate. So she's smiling, really nice, bright, not blue, bright, beautiful red eyes. Really, really nice. Not sharp red, it kind of got a soft redness to it, but they're really, really nicely uh, painted or detailed on. Really love them. We've got the blue eyebrows there as well, but otherwise, very nice you know faceplate like Nendoroid tend to do so this is all really really good it's a shame she only comes with two faceplates but otherwise this is really nicely done the other one is nice as well but we're going to go through that in just a moment Dizzy does also come with alternate wings so she doesn't just come with Necro and Undine exposed she does have them as just generic wings as well which are really nicely done in my opinion these are really really beautiful wings so we'll go with the Necro one first the dark version or the greenish slightly colored one so there's a lot of green going on with this very dark green and different shading going on so with each feather you can kind of see the paintwork on it is quite nice quite quite nice in my opinion same with the back side as well this is on a little peg here so i can actually take this off just to show you there's the peg right there and the same applies with the other wing as well but i'm just going to show you here so you can move this up to well wherever really but it's really nice you've got the ball joint here which i've already attached i did have to actually, actually detach mine which i'll get into a little bit more detail so you've got that there already it's already loose on my one this may happen for you as well the wings are a little bit weighty even for the basic wings so you can imagine the ones with the actual characters being 3d sculpted they're going to add a lot more weight to the wings so having extra joints is definitely handy then we can show you a little bit more detail on the other wing as well so the white or ice blue or undine wing same thing there with the peg my one's a little bit loose here it comes off a bit but it's okay just attach it back on it's not a ball so it's not too bad and then you've got the same white kind of ice tones going on there. This is much more on the white side with a few little bit of ice blue going on in this bit here, detail there. And on the back, it's pretty similar looking as well. But otherwise, both are very nicely plain sculpted wings. So that brings us to the figure where there's quite a bit to talk about because there's different parts of it, especially you might as well count these as almost three characters in a sense, or two, count these as halves, let's say. So I'm just going to show you as it is on the base stand. Now with some Nendoroids, they don't balance so great on their own, some do. With Dizzy's case, you can imagine the wings are weighted, so you are most definitely going to want to use the base stand that's included. And as you can see, it is a bigger base stand that I've included, which is good. It's handy and it just covers a lot more surface area with the wings attached, whether it's these two sculpted wings or the plain wings that I showed you earlier on these ones, for example. So I've got the actual stand assembled already. This plugs, as you can see, not directly into the figure it actually plugs into a separate piece that the wings attach into and then that attaches into the figure which i'm going to disassemble just to just give you a clearer picture but from the side it looks like this i've already got this plastic bit here the ring piece i'm not actually sure what that is i can't remember if she always has that or only when she's kind of doing attacks but i've just kind of assembled that as well and then we can kind of go to the other side to kind of have a look there so let me take her off the actual base stand i'm going to leave the wings attached anyway um, so just pull it off like so well that's yeah that should hopefully come off otherwise the peg itself may get stuck in there it's not too hard to take off like you just saw i'm gonna put that to the side there this is actually the ring that is not in a ring when you take it out of the box i've actually assembled this so what you do it's going to actually be one sheet of plastic like so with the detail on there which is nice it's simple it gets the job done this has plastic on there i haven't taken that off because i don't want to scratch it so remove it so you remove any fogginess and you get the more clear look of it and a nice clean look of it this is how you're supposed to assemble it so you actually just slot the actual sheet in here like so and then similarly for the other side and then you get a nice ring and you can use that how you want i'm not a huge fan of the ring but it's there so use it if you want to use it so let's talk about the detail of the figure and then we'll talk about the actual wings as well. So Nendoroid figures tend to be perfect. Like the sculpt is perfect and the paint tends to be super good as well. Dizzy is no different. I absolutely love the way 
dizzy look. Her hair in particular is absolutely amazing. I think it's super good, stunning, honestly. So the sculpt is very good. It's not her, like her hair is not simple. It's not the most easiest thing to sculpt or design. She's got the fold here on both sides. And then it goes into the actual long pigtail piece here, as you can see. Very nice sculpting, very nice line work going on there. The actual paintwork on it is probably my favorite part of her hair so far. Just love the shading. The different shades of blue is just perfect in my opinion. I love the way it looks. This is all kind of completed with the yellow ribbons up top. Now it is a nendoroid form factor, so obviously things are going to be different. And because of these big ribbons and a big head overall, gets a little bit in the way of the actual wings, as you can see. Less so with the other wings, but definitely it gets in the way. But yeah, the hair absolutely looks amazing. I really, really love the way the hair has come out with this dizzy figure. Now with the face, this is actually the alternate facial expression. The other one is the original one. So this is more of a concerned expression. And just like the original one, the faceplate is fine. The eyes look great. The eyebrows look great. The expression itself is perfect. The mouth is pretty good. It's very cute. It's a very cute looking face. I really like the way this face has come out. It is a shame she only comes with two faces, but both are done very, very well. And moving down towards the outfit and all of that. So I showed you the sleeves and the straight arm. So this is all going to be the same there. The shoulders are also going to be the same. All the actual outfit stuff is the same. So this is actually an alternate pair of arms. You do have to swap these in, which I'll show you later on by kind of disassembling it. Actually, the reverse order. The actual torso stuff. Right, let's be real. Dizzy doesn't wear a lot of clothes or she wears very, very, very revealing clothes. In this Nendoroid form factor, it's not as obvious, I guess, except for the uh, panties. That's definitely obvious. But yeah, generally speaking, in the actual normal artwork that she has and in game, she doesn't wear a lot of clothes. So you can see the dress here. So you can get, what is it, Bodice? I don't know if, that, if that's the right name for this kind of outfit. But you can see there, it's got the little button details there and then the little bit on the chest and then you got a black bit how it breaks out into black on the side obviously the wings are getting in the way a little bit she's got an open back dress as well but with the straps there with a the gold ring at the top and you may miss the neck piece but hopefully we can show you that that kind of attaches there as well like a kind of necklace almost i don't think it's actually a necklace it is part of the entire dress design Actually, I don't know how different her dress design in XZ, which this is based off, is going to be different to X2, for example. It might actually be exactly the same. It might not be. I think there may be some slight differences. But anyway, this is how her dress looks. And she's got the actual uh, flared out bit over here, which is soft. It does have some flex to it, so you shouldn't break it anyway. But you can see the belt design and detail going around. So all the detail, that's why, well, the detail on it is very nice, actually. Whether it's captured one-to-one, -one, with the actual design, I don't actually know. I don't follow Dizzy that much or Cutie Gear that much. But the detail to me looks perfectly fine. You got the panties. We can just kind of say, okay, they're panties. And they've got some icon or emblem at the crotch area there. Down at the back side, they go pretty plain. But that then goes into the tail bit, which I might as well talk about now. The tail just comes in a little peg like so. And that just has rotation only. And the tail is nice and smoothly sculpted. Actually looks very good, very clean. And that ends with a yellow ribbon at the end or yellow bow at the end and then going down to the legs again so she's got a little bondage tights or whatever going on there with the two cross shaped stuff on both legs then with the tights you've got the white emblem this different white emblem here the gold detailing here finishing off with the boot symmetrical boot pattern on either leg and then that ends with the actual blue on the sole stiletto heels there so very cute looking feet um, but that's how dizzy looks now in terms of the wings fortunately they came off so that's i can talk about that now you got the normal back peg hole right there where you can actually plug the stand in directly if you wanted to for most characters in this case dizzy's wings would have to be attached to the central piece here and then that then plugs into the back of the figure pretty simple to do personally but we can talk about that in a little bit later on now, as far as the wings go, so these are the actual sculpted ones, not the plain ones as we saw early on. So this is Necro on this side and then Undine on this side. I always used to call it Undine, by the way, but Undine. And then they are fully sculpted in 3D. So as I mentioned a couple of times now, they are weighted. So you are going to use the stand or want to use the stand. And hopefully this doesn't cause issues or any joint issues, socket issues, because when you have weight attached to small sockets, they do expand. And eventually over time, they can just yeah not be very, very... Uh, secure so this could happen and it is happening slowly a little bit in one so actually with the stand central bit here these joints are already attached in this center bit so i actually took it off of the main wing piece and then just attached it here you may or may not need to do that it's not a big deal either way but they're there for you so you get a, like i said a different spares so 
Going with Necro first, he sculpted really well. The sculpt, again, is nice and clean for everything throughout on this figure. The paintwork is very, very cool. This figure overall has a lot of cool paintwork going on, lots of different color gradients going on. So not just the hair that we saw here, but the wings with the green and then going into this kind of like dark blue type of thing. Very, very cool. So the solid green up top when it's sculpted with the actual um, Necro figure. Very cool. He's even got the detail of the prayer beads around his neck as well. All really good stuff. Like, I just love the way this figure has turned out. I'm not even a big Dizzy fan, but I, I think I did a good thing by picking this up and checking it out because I love this figure so far. The detail on him, like I mentioned, very good. His face is looking, well, <laughs> deathly anyway. This is an alternate arm, as I mentioned. So actually, this is one where it's going to be pointing a little bit to you. But you can kind of move that down if you want. It's just on a little peg. You just swap that out. It's just on the peg. It's not very difficult to do. The reverse side is pretty plain, though. Well, as in no detail like that, but the actual paint is very good on the reverse side. This does also come on the peg as well, so you can move this up and down. And then we go on to the left wing, which is Undine. And Undine has very ice blue kind of look to it. Very, very cool looking. I love ice blue. It's one of my favorite kind of color themes. It just is super good. And this is pre-frozen before anyone asks. I just love ice blue. It's super cool. Ha, no pun intended. But you can see the sculpt is the same here. She's got all her hair sculpted very nicely. She's got nice long hair which goes into the wing. But it's two separate pieces. The wing itself painted super good again. Like I said, the ice blue. You've got the whites at the top. And then it goes into more sky blue towards the tips of the feathers, you could say. The dress is even sculpted for Undine, which is pretty cool, right? She has a dress actually sculpted. How cool is that? This arm is also an alternate arm. It's just on a peg. I'll take that out to show you and then just plug that in. So the actual regular arm is a bit more like that, but the opposite, like the hand is more like come towards me type of thing. Facial expression on this one is also quite good. Nothing too spectacular. Lips are a little bit kind of blending with the face overall, but otherwise the eyes look pretty good. And overall, two very great looking wings. Very, very great looking wings. Now, I'm not going to talk about articulation so much because you can probably figure out that it just goes up and down for the most part and then legs, a little bit of a twist. There's really not a lot with this figure with articulation. Now, what I'd skip ahead to is going to be swapping parts. So first, let's swap parts with the hair. That's going to be straightforward. Just take the front bangs off like so. Really nice hair, got to say. Love the hair again. Take the faceplate off like so and then put in the other replacement face. And in our case, we're going to put on the happy face and then we just add the bangs back on. Now, we're going to change the arms next. Now, when you change the arms, it might actually be simpler to take off the wings, especially the sculpted ones, because they do get in the way a bit, um, especially if you're going to swap the clasped arms. So this one already on what you have to do to take them off. And even when you take on just do the reverse is take it off at the shoulder. They do come apart at the hand. That might be easier to do that. Then remove the other arm like so. Put that aside. Now you can actually take off the hand, as I mentioned here, and then use other hands and different limbs. You could do that up to you. Now she's free to have the other arms attached. So I'm going to go back and then just add the kind of slightly bent arm because I quite like those. But first I need to grab the correct shoulder piece as well. So this is going to be for that arm. So all I'm going to do is get the shoulder piece, which is a separate attachment, add that back in to the shoulders themselves, the shoulder sockets. I'm going to add that as a whole arm. Why not Just keep that arm the same? So I'm going to keep that arm the same. And then for the left arm, I'll add this. And then all you got to do, yeah, add this in. For me, adding the actual arm into the shoulder piece, the socket was a little bit tight, but that's okay. Just kind of rotate it in or screw it in like so. And there you go. You've got the two different arms instead of the clasped, clasped, clasped arms. So it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward to do. But be warned, try not to lose any of the hand pieces or small pieces that Nendoroids tend to come with. Then we'll swap to actually her regular wings instead. So you're going to bring the pigtails back a bit. You can actually take these off here if you want to, but I'm just going to bring them forward or back. So you can just plug those in. They're on a peg as well. Let's grab the wings. What you want to do is just take them off the joint. For me, they come off at the actual joint here. For you, it might actually come off from a central bit. Whichever way it does, you'll figure it out nicely, I hope. Here, I've already got the joint attached. So what I need to do, for me, it was easier to do this. Just remove the joint from the wing and then attach the wing back here like so. Similarly for the green, black wing. And then we do the same thing. Attach that back here. So it's all pretty straightforward to do. But as I mentioned, over time, you know, the weight and the kind of constant swapping may end up loosening the sockets, which is going to be a slight shame. Then you just plug that peg back into Dizzy's back 
like so. And there we've got Dizzy with her kind of non-sculpted or non-personal uh, persona wings, let's say. So even with these wings, it's a very, very adorable looking figure. And I think it looks complete either way. So you've got a couple of different options to do it. And the fact that they gave you both regular wings and then the sculpted wings, like so, very, very cool. They could have easily sold that as a deluxe edition or deluxe parts as they do with some of the Nendoroids. But here they sold it as one complete pack which is pretty awesome. But yeah, you can't deny that this figure does look very good right here, even with these wings as well. Really cool, really, really awesome stuff going on here. There's really not much else to swap out. Um, you could swap out the limbs or the hands for the arms here, so you can use the uh, kind of crunched hand or fist for this hand or the other way. I will just show you quickly to swap this arm for Necro, why not? So that's on, as a, on a peg, as I mentioned. I did show you uh, Undine swap, but I'll show you Necro as well, just to show you how that looks. Like. Just plug this arm back in, and there you can see he's got a different arm position. Both are very cool, actually. I quite like this one. This one's a bit more like I'm coming for you, and this one's a bit more, yeah, I've got you type of thing, or however you want to kind of uh, explain the pose. But very cool that you get two arms for that. And before I forget to change the leg, you just got to pull on the right leg because you're only going alternate right leg. Take it off at the tights bit. This bit had a peg on it. Take that peg off. And then just plug the alternate leg back in. So remember, it's a slightly bent leg, like so. And that's what she's going to look like with the bent leg on. Personally, I'm fine with her to just use both straight legs. But they've given you an alternate to kind of mix things up a bit. In short, this is a very awesome looking figure. Now, it might not have the articulation as some of the other Nendoroids that I've covered. And it might not even have the actual additional limb parts that other Nendoroids have. But it has some... But I can forgive it in this case just because it is an awesome figure even in the limited poses that it can do. And that's in huge parts thanks to the gorgeous looking hair and the paint on the hair and the really awesome looking wings as well. Whether it's the plain wings or the fully exposed Undine and Necro wings as well. The paint on them is great. So the greens to the midnight blues that Necro has is great. The expression on his face is very cheeky looking for the Nendroid form pack factor. It looks great. And then you got Undine as well, who looks absolutely great, beautiful in the ice blue to sky blue tips on the wings. I love ice blue, as I mentioned, so I think it just stands out a lot. If you've got this on your display case, this is definitely going to stand out and hopefully you know, give an impression to whoever's viewing your display case, except the impression may be questionable based on the outfit of Dizzy, but that's a different topic and I'm not going to get into that right now, since especially X2, she wears less. But still, this is a very awesome looking figure thanks to those wings anyway. If you are a Dizzy fan, I would say try and check this out if you can. I know it might be a little bit expensive because Nendoroids have been creeping up in price just a wee bit these days, but see if you can try and, you know, script some cash together for it potentially. I do wonder if they're going to carry on with the Guilty Gear series in some capacity. I'm not hugely attached to the series anymore. I don't play it anymore. But there could be some interesting characters that I don't mind checking out. For example, Venom, since he has, I think, the Snooker Q and the Snooker Balls, I think it is. So that could be an interesting one that I might check out if they did it. But I don't know yet. I don't know. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed having a look at this Dizzy figure with me. Let me know if you are going to get it. If you're not going to get it, still let me know what your thoughts are on this figure and who you'd like to see from the Guilty Gear series turned into a Nendoroid. Stay safe wherever you are, take care, and I will hopefully see you in the next one.